Yes, my peoples, it's T, and today I am previewing the Apprentice Series 17. Now, tomorrow, Thursday, the 5th of January, 2023, the first episode of Series 17 will be going live on the BBC, and I, for one, am very interested and very invested in seeing what Series 17 lies in store for me. So, um... In this video, I will be looking at the trailer on the BBC um, to the new series. And then I'll be also looking at the actual contestants that will be involved in this season's series. Now, one thing I do want to actually mention before we do get started. The last season, um, obviously the one I watched last year, the winner was Harpreet, if I believe. Um, she had a dessert business, dessert, dessert parlour, um, and she won the quarter of a million investment from Alan Sugar. Um, can somebody tell me, has anybody actually seen her since since she's won? Has anything happened? Um, is her business doing well? Um, I'm very, very intrigued, but I'm sure we'll probably get some sort of, of an update from Alan Sugar in the new season. But yes, also two things I want to mention before we actually start watching the trailer is, I've heard two things already about this, about this series. The first thing is, Claude is back. Claude, who was not in last year's series due to an injury is back this year and Claude um obviously it's always good to see him because he is a character and a very, a very fun fun one to watch um and secondly I've also heard that the first episode which is debuting tomorrow um the first challenge straight off the bat they're all going abroad somewhere and it's going to be a big bang big challenge so looking forward to seeing that tomorrow but without further ado let's get into the video let's get it this is not a game. This remains the toughest job interview. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. The world's now open for business. I'm kicking things off with the ultimate task. One yes, do buy that do buy. Postcards get back. Damn. Let's get down to business. Yo, Alan Sugar doesn't age, man. He looks the same age. Still, he looks still look young, still looks fresh. Doing well. Spending his money wisely. Okay, so that was a very, very short trailer there. What I got from that is essentially um, that this year they haven't held back on the budget at all. Um, I saw Dubai, I saw ever foreign countries. Um, so they're going to be flying out the contestants all over the place to be doing challenges for sure. And of course, we saw a little glimpse of Claude back in the show as well, which is good to see. Um, so in the previous... In the previous um, series, or in recent series actually of of the of the Apprentice, I have kind of noticed that it's become a bit of a a bit of a reality show in some in some cases. Um, it's like I feel like some certain things are a little bit forced, a little bit fake potentially. But um, regardless, it's still a very enjoyable watch, um, and there's always drama, especially when you put a bunch of people together who are vying for a quarter of a million pound investment. So um, definitely very excited about this year's series. So we're going to get into the, the second part of the video, which is we're going to actually take a look at who's actually involved in this year's series so far. So let's take a look at the contestants to get you all prepped, hyped and ready for tomorrow's first episode. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right. So essentially, we are back tomorrow with the first episode. And already we can see um, that they're going to have the first episode in Antigua, I believe, um, which I can see here. So they're going to be they're going to be all flown to Antigua from the very first episode. So no budgets hold back there. And they'll be creating a task where they'll be selling excursions to tourists. So that should be interesting tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing that for sure. Um, and there's also this year, there's also 18 contestants, which is... Um, if I mean, they go, it says right there. So if I'm correct, that is actually the most contestants I've seen um, for quite a while. So this is the first time since season 13, there are 18 contestants taking part. So yeah, it's going to be, a, it's going to be, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. So let's get acquainted with our contestants for this year and see what is going on. So first up, we have Avi Sharma. So of course, as usual, um, every every series, every season, The Apprentice tries to have at least one brown person and one 
black person just to you know just to kind of fill that ethnic quota of course so let's let's see how many there are this year um just to mix it up and see and let's see how long they last as well <clears throat> see how long they last so avi sharma he's a city banker um from london and he's the youngest candidate in season 17 so okay the youngest one it isn't quite say how old he is but um i'm intrigued to see how he does and how far he gets Secondly, we have Bradley Johnson. Now, looking at him, he he looks he, he looks pretty pretty young as well, to be fair. Um, but he looks like a serious man, um, and he's already a director of a construction company based in North Yorkshire. Um, so yeah, he's got a business plan that will see him turn over seven figures after year three. So yeah, that is that's that's big that's big big business right there. Big business right there. Then we have Danny Donovan who is an owner of a hair salon and she is based in Hertfordshire. Um, and of course she's vying for that quarter of a million investment. And she started her business as a teenager, which is very impressive because um, everybody who has their own business, you will know that it takes a lot of hard work, a lot, a lot of d dedication, a lot of focus to actually take, to lift it off the ground and to be starting that, starting as a teenager. Um, that means, you know, she was quite focused um, next one, we have Denisha Cole Barge, um, and she is a financial controller from Leicestershire. Okay. So yeah, you know, I'm actually intrigued. I wonder what her business plan actually is. Um, I wonder if it relates to financial, um, the financial world or is it something else? Cause sometimes you get people, you hear their job and the business plan in the actual show is something completely different, just completely left field. So I'm definitely very intrigued. And she says she wants to build an empire with Lord Sugar, so I'm intrigued. But you know what? So far, so far, everybody has kind of, in my opinion, anyway, has kind of fit a stereotype already. Um, so I've actually, the first person I saw, Ravi, I had a feeling straight away he was in finance. Um, and lo and behold, city banker, I could tell by his face. I could tell by this guy's attire that he was from up north. He wasn't from down south in London. Um, and I had a feeling he was, you know, he was a grafter and manual labor. Um, and of course, he's the director of a construction company from North Yorkshire. Um, I could tell that already. And Danny, as soon as I saw her, I fought hair. Um, and lo and behold, she's a, she owns a hair, hair salon. And um, and Denisha, I knew straight away as well. She was going to be in finance most likely, and probably, or oh, um, probably going to be from the Midlands or London. Um, and of course, Leicester um, being a hub. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Emma Brown. Okay. Emma Brown, senior account executive, whatever that means. Um, she's from County Kildare, wherever that is. Um, and she's apparently laser focused on making her unique business idea a resounding success. Whatever her idea is, I'm very intrigued now. Um, but she's, or she, she's already said that she's very competitive. So, um, I'm going to guess, could be wrong, we'll find out when the show starts tomorrow, but I'm going to guess she's going to be um, a very stern lady. She will not be walking all over. She's, she's competitive, she knows what she wants, apparently. Um, so I think she's going to be a stern one. And she may do well. Next, Gregory Ebbs. Okay. He's the owner of an online antiques marketplace. I'm not going to lie, by his face, I had a feeling it was something to do with antiques or something, you know, a little left field. Um, and he's from Shropshire, so... Yes, um, a local council. Oh, it's a councillor as well. Okay, Gregory owns an online antiques. Okay, he looks pretty young, but um, the kind of field he's in, interesting. Must have a lot of experience. So that is, uh, what's his name again? Gregory, Gregory. Okay, Joseph Phillips. Okay, with a strong jawline. I can already tell what kind of character he's going to be just by, just by his, his jawline. <laughs> um, he's a safari guide from South Africa and based in Worcestershire. Okay, nice. Midland's massive again. Um, he's got a degree in zoology, so he should do very well on the first task. Maybe just for the fact that you know he's a tall guy, so he can sell stuff very well. So whichever team he ends up on, it's gonna be boys versus girls initially. Anyway, uh, the boys should do really well with this guy on his team in the first task as a safari guide. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. And his business idea is to help save the ocean, um, one lip balm at a time. <laughs> whatever that means what does that mean <laughs> the first part sounds good um but the second part okay 
So yeah, that is that guy. We have Kevin Darcy. Um, yeah, with his with his strong blue eyes. He's an accountant from Dublin. You know what? The blue eyes gave it away. I, I could tell that he was Irish um, from the blue eyes straight away. But yes, he started his sports equipment business during lockdown um, whilst working in financial services. So he's looking to expand that business with Lord Alan Sugar. We have Mark Mosley. Now, again, I don't like to, you know, this is what I don't normally prejudge people, you know, that sort of stuff. But this is just for the fun of, of, of this, this, this particular segment. Mark Mosley looks like he's either part part of a um you know investment crime unit in in um in a TV show um, or I feel like he's going to actually be a very um annoying character on the show I feel like he's going to just try to force his uh, force his ideas be too controlling um and probably be a loud a loud laddie type of character on the show but I could be wrong he could be wrong we'll see but he's the owner of a pest control company okay from London um and he's a former soldier so yeah i could tell by his face he's a, he looks like a stern character like yeah he's done he's done he's done bits in hostile environments so yeah people like confidence people buy into that and that's why people buy into me see i could tell a i knew it before i even read this segment here i tell you he's gonna be like a laddie lad um a stern person and i could tell he's very very cocky but let's hope he can back that statement up with his performances then we have marnie swindles um she looks like she's she looking like a serious lady as well, um, who's not going to take any shit. Um, she's a court advocate, of course, from London and a gold medal winning boxer. OK, OK, so she'll punch up a man for disrespecting her. So that's good. <laughs> um, so she's ready to face off against her fellow candidates in the boardroom. Interesting. Then we have Megan Hornby. Um, she's the owner of a sweet shop and cafe. So um, that... I can already tell you right now, she's not going to win. Unless she's super incredible, she's not going to win. The reason why I say that is because last year's winner was a dessert parlor. The business is too close. I don't think Alan Sugar is going to invest in a similar business two years in a row. So unless she's got something incredible or unless her business idea is something different to what she actually does as a job, she's not going to win. But Megan, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Apparently, she's found a gap in the market. So at the end of the day, it's about what can make money. It's about you know, what can be successful. So you never know, she may can do it. She can prove that she's legit. Then we have Reese Donnelly. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing he's Irish as well. Um, sorry, or Scottish um, from Glasgow and the owner of Theatre School. Okay, so he's a bit of an actor, <laughs> bit of an actor. The first Scottish candidate to secure Lord Alan Sugar's investment. That's what he's hoping for. That is what he's hoping for. He's marketing savvy and um, he wants to turn over a million pounds before he's 30. Before he's already 30. Okay. Rochelle Anthony. Okay. She's the owner of a hair salon and academy from Bedfordshire, of course. Um, so I'm always being compared to the King Kardashian of the business world because I'm doing business with a hint of glam. Okay. Personally, I've already, I'm already not a fan. Um, <laughs> already not a fan just 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 by that whole statement there but who knows maybe she's the real deal and she's an actual strong businesswoman the one thing you can say about kim kardashian kim kardashian um her and her family are very good business people um they know how to make money not not everyone agrees obviously with their methods but they know how to make money um shannon martin uh, looking very serious as well so she's from west yorkshire and the owner of a bridal boutique Okay. All right. So, um, not much being said there. Shazia Hussein is the next candidate. She's a technology recruiter from London, and and she is, you know, a representation of diverse women in the world of business. Um, she don't need any friends in business. I'm here to win this. Now that attitude right there, that's the right attitude to go into this with. She's not here to make friends. She's here to literally do business and perform and win. Of course, you can make connections. You can still be respectful, you know, make connections and, and network along the way. But you don't, you don't need to be friends. A lot of people I've noticed in the past series, they've they've lost, they've lost their their way a little bit, or they lose, you know, a bit of focus because they get too close in the house, or they start forming relationships and start, you know, dating or whatever in that in that in the house a little bit. But if she sticks by this, she could go far. She could go far. 
So, yep, yeah, that is Shazia Hussein. Simba. Wambia. Simba. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I may have butchered that. And Siri has told me I butchered it as well. But Simba um, is a senior sales representative from Birmingham. Come on. Midlands Massive. All right. All right. I like that. You know, as you guys might can tell, I have a, I have a Midlands accent. So I like that. Um, a self-confessed self perfectionist. Simba's more than ready to challenge the status quo of the business world. Okay. I like that. Shohel Chowdhury. <laughs> I'm butchering all these names, but um, he's the owner of a martial arts school from Southampton. And he's calm and collected. But if they do come at me, he will bite. <laughs> and it will sting. And it will leave his mark. Serious. All right. Serious talk. Serious talk. Let's see how he does this year. He performs. Victoria Goldborn, owner of an online sweets business. Already, she's out. She's not going to win. Um, too close to last year's last year's um, <laughs> last year's winner. But who knows? Her business could be so so solid. She could get through. She could be such a great businesswoman. She might get through. But she's from Merseyside. Um, is that Liverpool? Um, but yes, she was a former flight attendant. Um, Victoria started her online sweet business during lockdown. You know, a lot of people have started their business during lockdown um, and they became a success during lockdown just because everybody was at home doing nothing. So there's on social media and, you know, buying all these things remotely. But the thing is now, can these businesses survive and thrive in a post lockdown world? Because there's less, there's less interest in these things now. There's, there's more, you know, there's, there's more fish in the sea, you could say, because people are allowed back outside again. So, Intriguing to see how she does. So yes, that is all the contestants for this year's season. So I'm looking forward to series 17. Who's going to be your favourite? We'll see. First episode tomorrow. And that is The Apprentice. So one thing I, I do want to say, um, actually, before I do end this video is um, The Apprentice is something which, you know, I'm, I'm considering actually potentially going on there them myself. Um, anybody who knows me, do you think I should do it? <laughs> do you think I should do it? Let me know. Um, to be fair, I think I would do quite well on there, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure I will actually do it. I'm just, I'm just pulling your leg a little bit. But anyway, without further ado, that's the end of the video. If you're watching this before it comes out, then enjoy the preview. If you're watching this after the first episode has come out, then still enjoy the preview um a bit of an after view um and i'll probably try to keep updating the channel with my views and thoughts as this series goes along and please let me know also who your favorite character is as the show goes along so without further ado let me end the video and i'll see you guys soon let's get it